In this video, we're going to look at the hand and wrist. We're going to look at all the carpal bones. We're looking at the palpation of those bones, the soft tissues, and what you'd be looking for when you're palpating through the hand and the wrist. Okay, so when it comes to the palpation of the wrist and hand, what we're going to look for, first of all, is swelling, any tone issues, laxity, deformity, pain, and heat when we're doing this. And we're also going to make sure that we check between the right and the left hand. So we're comparing both sides. For the purposes of the video, we're just going to do this one side. First of all, um, what we're going to do is look at the palmar aspect of the hand. And we're going to palpate the thena and the hypothena eminences of the hand. The hypothena eminence is on the um, medial border, so the level with the uh, ulna bone and the little finger. And the th thena eminence is the thumb side of the hand. In this area, we're going to be looking for wasting of the muscles and swelling. Uh, weakness and atrophy could indicate nerve palsy. So you want to look whether there might need any nerve conduction studies if this is the case, because it might indicate some nerve pathology. We can palpate the proximal thena eminence for the first carpometacarpal joint, and then we can go on to palpate the carpal bones. For the trapezium, you're going to slide down the thumb and the first metacarpal, and then you'll reach a divot, and then after this, this is the trapezium. For the trapezoid, this is uh, found between the trapezium and the capitate bone. And to find the capitate, we would slide down the third metacarpal bone in, uh, and then find the divot. And here you will find the capitate bone. Then you can find the trapezoid by going between the capitate and the trapezium. And this is where the trapezoid, is, trapezoid bone is found. For the hamate bone, you can find the hook of hamate in the hypothena region of the hand. And this is where the bony, you'll find a bony hook, which is tender to palpate when you're doing with this with the patient. The lunate bone is proximal to the capitate. So if you find the capitate bone and then you go proximally to this, you will feel the lunate bone. You can also flex the wrist. Uh, the lunate bone will become prominent. So this is where you, how you can tell that you're on the lunate bone. For the scaphoid, we can find the scaphoid tubercle, which is uh, in the thena eminence, and we can palpate this through the snuff box also. You can palpate the uh, scaphoid from both sides, one finger on the snuff box, and then one finger on the scaphoid tubercle in the thena eminence. The pisiform, we would slide down from the hypothena eminence, and it's the most prominent bone that you can feel in that area of the wrist, um, proximal to the hypothena eminence. For the triquetrum, we would palpate the ulnar side of the hand and deviate the hand radially, and then the triquetrum bone will become prominent when you do this. On the dorsal aspect of the hand, we can palpate the bones and look for pinpoint tenderness. So we can palpate the metacarpal bones and look for tenderness through those bones. We can also palpate the metacarpal phalangeal joints, the proximal interphalangeal joints, and the distal interphalangeal joints. And a squeeze test can be used for rheumatology conditions. So this is where you squeeze through the hand and then that uh, is positive if your patient has pain through their joints. You want to make sure that the pressure of the squeeze is located to cause some compression through their um, MCP joints. Radially, we can palpate the anatomical snuff box. And if you want to find this, you can do resisted extension of the thumb. In the middle of this would be the, the scaphoid on palpation. The abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis are four fingers distal to the snuff box. And if you had pain in this area, it would indicate a de Quervian's syndrome, especially if you get extension, resisted extension being painful. You can also palpate the radial styloid, which is a bony point at the distal end of the radius. Also, you can then palpate uh, up, proximally up the radius for pain or deformity. The ulnar side you can also palpate the ulnar stylo, which is the bony prominence that you can feel on the at the distal part of the ulnar bone. And also then you can palpate through the ulnar bone to see if there's any pinpoint uh, tenderness of that ulnar to check for fractures if the clinical history dictates that you should be looking for this. If you're a physio or therapist looking to get better, then press the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and that way you'll see all the, our current videos that are coming out, and they're all designed around helping you to get better. If you enjoyed this video, then click this one here, because you are going to love it.